Hi and welcome to Penn Central 99's channel. Today we're at the workbench because we're going to be making a dummy locomotive for one of my contests. Um, um, when I say dummy I mean no power, um, no motor and no sound. And the reason I'm going to be doing that is because I have the parts available with some old shelves and some old frames laying around where I don't need to spend another hundred bucks on a decoder and a speaker plus I really don't need the sound for the second loco in the consist uh, first locomotive or the lead loco has plenty of sound and power to do that but what I want to do is I want to make a two locomotive consist to make it look a little bit better to get things started I had a locomotive as part of a set that I got probably 25 years ago and I've had it for you know most of my adult life uh, this locomotive, you know, over the years, the motor burned out. And just like anybody else with any other Bachman locomotive, you know, you send it back to the factory, you write them a check for 20 or 25 bucks, and they send you a new one. Uh, but before I did that, I kept the shell. And the reason I kept the shell before I sent it back to Bachman, because I love this paint scheme. I mean, I think this uh, Santa Fe War Bonnet paint scheme is just awesome, and I love it, and that's why I've had this shell for as long as I can remember. But I've always thought about what I could do to get it running again or get it back as part of a, a consist or a train. So I came up with the idea that I was going to use some of my older locomotives that I have. Okay? I've had these two Conrail GP40 since I was about 12. Okay? I'm almost 50, so you guys do the math and you can figure out how old these things are. But they're DC. Believe it or not, for their age, they still run. Um, I've had them on a track with a DC power pack. They scream and make noise, but they do run. But what I'm going to do is, since the cab numbers or the locomotives are identically the same, um, this cab here is a little bit damaged. Uh, the horns are broken. It's scratched, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to gut this thing, and I'm going to put the shell back on here. I'm going to try and reduce the weight as much as possible on the lead locomotive. Uh, plus, we don't need the gears and the things like that in there anyway, but... I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to use this shell. So let's These older style locomotives come apart uh, pretty easily. There's just two tabs uh, that hold this to the frame and all you got to do is just gently pull apart and you can see how that separates. You know, you can see the little tabs here on the, the frame and the slots here on the shell where they go together. But like I say, this is going to be pretty easy, I think. And all we got to do is gut this. We'll just take the motor out and the gears, um, maybe a couple of the weights out of there to help reduce the load um, or the drag on the lead locomotive. But we'll go ahead and get uh, gutted on this thing. And should be pretty easy. Now, the other thing with these older style shells is you notice that the, uh, the coupler pockets are on the frame, whereas some of the newer locomotives, it's... Um, on the shell itself uh, but it all depends and with the the Santa Fe body you can see that the gap here in the front is just a little bit wider than the one here on the Conrail body but um, that's gonna get hidden especially being the second loco in the concept consist so it's really not gonna be that difficult all right let's start by getting these couplers out of the way you can see this coupler pocket is broken uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, get this one out of the way. Now please keep in mind that um, all of these parts are going to be saved. I'm not going to throw anything away um, because as we all know that somewhere down the road these parts could come in handy. Even the smallest screws come in handy somewhere down the road. So, you can see the wires here and as most of you know from some of my other videos, I do my own uh, sound decoder installs. These wires are coming really handy, especially for power pickups. They're heavy enough gauge to do that. What I got to do is cut them and uh, resolder them back on. The lights, the fixtures, and assemblies uh, can be used again. Okay, you can see the little tab that holds this one in place. And all you got to do is apply a little pressure, and it pops right out of there. Uh, so, like I say, I'm going to desolder those wires off of there and uh, reuse this truck assembly this will this will come apart while we're waiting for the soldering iron to warm up uh we can start taking some of this stuff off of here i say these wheels come apart just like any other loco they just pop out of the um, the truck assembly but we're going to save all this stuff 
because every bit of this is salvageable. Now, as I was doing this, you see the pickup wire popped off of there. Um, so I'm just going to take some wire cutters and go ahead and uh, get rid of that solder connection. We really don't need that, and that's not going to make that much of a difference. Um, the other thing is these. This what holds the uh, the pickup on. That little plastic comes right off of there. See that just comes right apart. We'll save that down the road. All this stuff is very salvageable. So we'll just put that back on there. Flip it over. I'm not sure if this solder connection, you know, that, that broke right off of there too, but we're just going to cut that off of there so we can pull the wire through there. That truck is free. These wires will pull up of there. Now we have the, the back assembly taken care of. I had it off. There we go. Now what we'll do is we'll put this back in there and uh, get the wheels going. Just for clarification, um, I did not change the wheels out to Inner Mountains. Uh, what I did is well, I took them out of there and cleaned them up pretty good. And they're pretty free rolling inside of that truck assembly. So I'm just going to use those and I'm going to pop this back into place. Okay, that side's done. So let's go ahead and get the front. The light bulb or the light assembly just pulls up out of there. To get the motor out of the front and the front truck, ass truck assembly, you need to take this screw out because what it does is that plastic black tab right there is what helps hold it into the frame. So we're just going to unscrew that. There, there's that black tab that holds that. Okay, now we just need to. Uh, Pull all that excess stuff off that front truck assembly and um, put it back together. And okay, after further review, I didn't even need the soldering iron because these wires are held on uh, with these uh, tabs with screws, so I can just remove them. Plus, it's the same token. I can't get rid of this motor. This is all one piece plastic. Uh, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the gear assembly or the gear here uh, on the axle and put it back together that way it, it spins freely. So give me a couple of minutes to do that and then I'll be right back. We're almost done. As you can see I've got uh, all the components back in. I've removed the wiring. Uh, I've got the screws out that hold these weights in there so I'm just going to go ahead and remove um, this stack of weights. Leave the weights that are in the fuel tank there. Um, this still has a little bit of weight to it, and you're going to need that uh, so that it controls a little bit better and just doesn't fall off the track. You need something to help hold it on there. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and go with that. Um, I don't have a scale to do the uh, NMRA weight, um, so I'm just going to have to go with what feels like maybe a box car or something. Okay, we're just about done. As you can see, I've got the front and the rear trucks back in along with the wheels. Um, they're in gauge. I went and uh, <laughs> grabbed my track gauge to make sure that the wheels were in um, in alignment because I had them apart and was cleaning them. If you don't have a, uh, a track gauge, I su suggest you go get one because they come in handy. But anyway, I pulled the weights out of there. Um, what I did is I'm going to leave this stack that in the fuel tank out and I'm going to put these back on to help distribute the weight a little bit more. Uh, that way I can also use these screws to hold them back in place instead of uh, just loose in there. Um, I have the coupler pockets and the KDs on there on the front and the back. So all we need to do is just get the shell back on there. And it's a matter of spreading the bottom apart a little bit and snapping it on there. Now I have a nice dummy locomotive. It's going to being a consist and here's what it looks like MU'd with my Santa Fe 3500 so let's fire it up and we'll take it for a run and see what it looks like
Well, that pretty much does it for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for watching.